welcome by the Orchid Saga. My name is Ilkian Wiersma and uh, I live in the Netherlands and we are now currently visiting my uh, greenhouse. Next to the greenhouse I have my orchid room for those who are new here on the channel. Uh, I film uh, uh, quite a lot, both of them of course, my orchids and uh, I also uh, participate uh, quite often uh, if I do have the orchid in a care collab as, uh, we, uh, as I do to today. Um, so, um, this care collab is about the Maxillaria and I have only one of them and I will explain why I only have one of them because I have uh, quite a lot of uh, orchids. I have something around 325, something there, so quite a lot, but I only have one Maxillaria. So that's uh, to, be, uh, to be discussed uh, uh, further on in this video, but before I do that, I would like to insert a picture with the names of the other participants uh, for this uh, care collab today. And uh, what I like about these care collabs, uh, at least one of the things is that, especially for uh, people that have this specific orchid, but it doesn't do well, or uh, for uh, people that would like to get a maxillaria before on forehead, they like to have a little bit more information about what to expect, what this orchid needs, etc. So that's, uh, you will get information about, about that and also uh, growing them in the different climates. Like I said, I'm from the Netherlands, perhaps you are uh, from a, a completely different part of the world and uh, so you can compare what I do and maybe translate it sort of into your si uh, system, your situation and of course your climate. Uh, so that's uh, why I like these uh, care collapses so much. And also it gives me a quite a nice uh, ability to uh, get introduced to other channels I didn't even heard of before. So uh, that's uh, one thing, uh, another thing that I really like as well. So this was uh, the introduction. We had a look at the names of the channels, like I said. I will have their, um, their links to the channels in the video uh, this, uh, description below. So you can easily check uh, other ones as well. They are will be linked. So uh, let's um, show me where I grow my uh, maxillaria and then we will have a close uh, look at the plant itself. So yeah, you see uh, no maxillaria at this moment. I will explain. I had it growing in that corner there. But as you can see, even it's, it's not a bright uh, day today, but my uh, uh, brighter uh, light orchids are over here, so it's my Venda, Vendacious types, my Cattleyas on the left. So this is a part of the greenhouse that uh, receives the most light. It's uh, south-southwest facing, but I had it there in that corner. It's a little bit behind that wall, and I think my Maxillaria, it did grow well, but it didn't bloom over there, so I changed it. And as you can see, I have my lights on here, so these are also orchids that like a little bit more light. And here, on the left, you see my maxillaria, and uh, since it did, uh, since I did put it on this place with the lights, I now have uh, at least one bloom. So I think I like the this setup a little bit better, and I think that's mostly um, due to the more light it will receive now of that growing light. Well, actually, it's an all, uh, LED light, a shop light, nothing special. But uh, that's what I can afford because I need quite some lights, as you can see. There's only one part we have in the back, all lights, and also in my greenhouse, of my in my orchid room. So a lot of lights that would uh, be too expensive for me if I have this, those really classed um, growing lights for plants. I just use uh, LED cool white, so the the blue lights. Those are the closest to the daylight and have quite a high percentage of of light. I know that you describe it a little bit different, but I think you know what I mean. I'm not an expert on it, but I see that it works. You can see this one is also, it's a Lycaste, likes the light and has a quite a heck of a lot of spikes. But now we're going to talk about the care and I will grab the orchid so we have a closer look at my maxillaria. So here we are, this is uh, the maxillaria. And let me uh, first show off uh, this beautiful bloom. It's the first time that I have it uh, rebloomed, and um, it's beautiful. I like. To, I try to zoom in a bit. I think it's pretty nice in screen. I, I cannot see it very clear, but I think you have a good impression of uh, this bloom. Let me uh, grab the tag because this is a maxillaria. But which one exactly? It's the 
Chrysantha. I will have the name in the screen, but it's the Maxillera Chrysantha. And uh, as you may know, uh, if you're longer on my channels, I do uh, like the yellow blooms very much, so therefore I have a yellow one. And um, I only have one. I do like this, this plant, but I do not like them as much that I need more, at least at this stage. Maybe one day I will. But um, I, uh, yeah, like I said, I enjoy them, but I enjoy my orchid, other orchids a little bit more. Uh, just personal preference. But uh, I like to have at least one of quite some different uh, genera within the orchid family. So therefore, I, of course, I needed to have a maxillaria. So, and uh, you probably already saw it, but this one has, I counted them before I started filming, uh, has eight new uh, growths. So I think uh, in the overall, and the uh, leaves do look pretty uh, nice, but I think they are a little bit dark on the dark side. They might be a little bit lighter as these, these ones, I think. Maybe even, oh, I'm sorry. Maybe even a little bit lighter than that. I don't know, but uh, at least it did get enough light to uh, produce one uh, bloom. And I did take uh, quite a few pictures, which I used in this video as my uh, thumbnail and also uh, with a display of the names of the participants. But I uh, like to um, have pictures of my orchids for my, in my notes. Just when, when I don't remember how they exactly bloom or how, how they look like, or uh, sometimes I do have an uh, orchid uh, with a no idea, I can check it. And uh, so therefore I uh, took quite some pictures of this beautiful bloom. I really like it. And slightly fragrant. There is a fragrant, but not much. Not much. Maybe because it's a dull day and um, I thought I saw a pest, but it's not a pest, luckily. So yeah, but it, it, it does uh, look uh, quite well. I uh, will take it out of the pot so you can have a look uh, inside the pot as well, but I need to put it down for that. I need to use my both hands. And there we are. I have this in a mixture of probably everything I had in my <laughs> in my uh, growing um, area. As you can see, I have it. Whoops! I have Lekka, pomace, Saramas. <laughs> um, to be honest, I think when I bought it, I had no idea where to put it in. So I thought, well, let's do a bit of everything, <laughs> and uh, it, it worked. But uh, yeah, there's no thought process behind that. Absolutely nothing more than I had it laying around, and let's use it because I don't know how to grow this one. Um, whoops! There goes the name tag, but that's. Not a big problem. Let me see. I have some roots there, as you can see. It's a fairly big pot. So I think I will have more roots on the end of this next season. I, I think because the orchid is growing more. Um, yeah, I do not see much roots on the uh, uh, bottom of the pot. But it's doing well. I think it looks uh, pretty, pretty nice and healthy. So, uh, <laughs> even this is a bit strange a mixture, I think it, uh, this one likes it. So yeah, that's, uh, let me put it in the pot again, whoops, I don't have my, uh, I use a cable tie most of the times, just on the side so I can put it out, but this one doesn't have it, so it's a little bit difficult to get out and put it in, uh, back in. But um, yeah, I think uh, overall this one is doing well. Uh, before I forget, I feed all my orchids. Um, I, I have them growing in cell watering. I sometimes I forget, uh, forget uh, to mention things. So I always have a reservoir of water here. Uh, so therefore I have an outer pot and an inner pot. Um, and I like to grow basically every orchid that I have in cell watering, for an exception of my Vendas. I did try them, it didn't work, another video. Uh, it will be on my channel, or already is there. But anyhow, my Maxillaria does like it. It, it, it grows well, so I think it uh, really uh, enjoy, uh, enjoys this setup. But I must admit, I can see in winter it, it doesn't need as much water as in, in summer. In summer this one starts to drink uh, way more than in winter, so it's a little bit on the cool side. Um, in my greenhouse I have it at night around 18 degrees and during the day it depends. If the sun shines it's around 22, 23 de degrees, otherwise it stays around 80 or uh, 80. 18 or 19 degrees. We have a uh, degree Celsius. Yeah, like I said, in winter it does slow down a bit, so I give it less um, fertilizer. 
refer to my uh, fertilizer in parts per million. So I give them around 50 parts per million in, in winter. For all of my orchids that are growing in self-watering, even the bigger ones, they just get 50 because they slow down a little bit. But still, they like this one is growing new uh, growth, so it needs some fertilizer. And because this is always standing in water, it always has filter, fertilizer around around it, around the roots and inside of the pot, so it can eat basically what it what it wants. And the more it drinks, the more it eats. Most of the times, I think I cannot measure that, of course, but I think. Um, so therefore, I, I, yeah, I do pump it up a little bit in summer, the parts per million, around 150. 150 is quite, quite high for me, but I do that so most of the times so around 100 to 150, let's, let's put it like that. Because I'm still a believer that small amounts do wonders for your orchids, instead of giving them quite a, a large amount. Um, and keep in mind, I don't flush. I uh, once every three to four months I check my reservoir because if you don't flush after uh, about six months, something like that, the pH will drop, not rise with inorganic media as you start off, but uh, it will uh, will drop because of the bacteria, etc. So I keep it up uh, at around seven to eight pH as a max with my calcium powder uh, dolomite. I put a little bit in, in that reservoir and it will uh, be there, uh, will be good for months. It's also a calcium and magnesium, so it's also a sort of fertilizer for your plants. They, they really like it and they need their calcium magnesium, of course, to grow well. So it uh, double uh, fits uh, me and my plants. And my plants do wonderfully. I, I came up uh, sort of uh, on my own with this system. Well, I don't know uh, anybody who does it, uh, does it the same. But you learn things like in care collapse for one another, like I said in the beginning, translate it in your own, own situation. And that's how I came up with my, my customized self-watering system, like I, uh, like, I uh, like to call it. But it works for me because I don't have the time always to water my orchids. We, uh, I also have my daily uh, work and sometimes it can be very busy. So I needed a system that suits me very uh, much and uh, the self-watering does. And also my plants. I use these water indicators and it goes down now so that means this one uh, needs a drink um, but it, when it's uh, when it has enough water this one I hope you can see it I will see this red thing so it goes up or it goes down depending on the amount of water in there so that was quite a lot of information in a short time I think but that's basically in, in a nutshell my uh, my uh, growing uh, method which I really, really like. I'm a big fan. Uh, so if you like it, please consider subscribing. I will talk about it way more. I will have a little bit of uh, differences here and there on my growing system. But like I said, I will discuss it in, uh, in the, those videos that will be up here somewhere in the coming season. Let me check. Did I forget something? No, I did discuss the highlight recommendations for this one are fairly high, if you ask me. So that's uh, we did discuss the fertilizer and the temperatures. So I think uh, I basically covered every, everything for now. But as usual, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I always will comment back. So if you didn't get a comment, I probably didn't get a notification. That's a little bit of an issue. It's getting better on my channel, but sometimes I, uh, I miss some comments. So I apologize in advance if that happens. Please let me know. So, for now, thank you for watching, and like I said, you may want to consider subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you all for the who are subscribed to my channel already. It's a, a big compliment, I think, and I really enjoy making these videos. So, uh, I hope to see you at the next one. Bye-bye.